qualities that we must have to give da'wah. Qualities of a good da'iyah. Who is a good da'iyah? So he mentioned, mashallah, one of those qualities I was going to share with you. But quickly, let me just mention that quickly, just to put in mind. So number one, these are the, some qualities, not all, some, some. major qualities mm. or attributes of a good da'iyah. Number one is a taqwa. You have taqwa. You have fear of Allah, that you do it only for the sake of Allah, not. In addition to that, it's not far away from that, is sincerity, ikhlas. And you know taqwa is, it has a big secret, it's a big key. If you have taqwa, Allah will make it easy for you. There's an ayah stating, the ayah says, do you know the ayah? O man yattaqillah, يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا If you have taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this matter easy. Allah will make it easy for you. <coughs> there are other ayats speaking about taqwa and the importance of having taqwa. This is number one. Number two, quality number two, sincerity. You do that not to show off, not to... Let people say, oh, wow, he's a great speaker. Look at him. He's influential. He's a powerful speaker. <laughs> yeah. Your main purpose is to deliver the message to others, to share the message with others. So this is number two. What is it? Sincerity. Sincerity. That we, we try our best to, to make this sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, before... You need to set your intention. <coughs> Excuse me. Before you start, before you start your da'wah, set your intention correctly. Have a good intention. Even when you go to give da'wah, that I do it, I will go now to give da'wah only and solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During your da'wah, sometimes shaitan comes and says, look, Give them some example to show that you did many, many magnificent things. Give them. Allah knows your intention. Did you say it for educational purposes, as a model, or you, may, you mentioned that to let people say, wow, 5,000 people took shahada through his, mashallah. Shallah, many people embrace Islam through his wonderful. So Allah knows. Allah knows your intention. You are not to deceive or to cheat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows our hearts. Allah knows our intentions. And then after the work is done, some of us might lose the ajr, bragging about it, speaking about it. Oh, he did. But it's mine, he didn't know. He didn't know. 2,000 people took shahad in South Africa last year just through a short lecture. Yes. Yeah, it's they very easy. They make pro you know, better yeah, he makes, you know, like, he, like, you know, he is kind of arrogant and showing that Show many off. people were affected by his speech. And Allah, again, Allah knows about his intention. So we have to make our intention sound and correct. So we have to be careful. We are dealing with Allah. Don't please people at the expense of the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make Allah angry, <coughs> so dangerous. To make people pleased or happy, no so benefit. what? No benefit. Are they going to grant you Jannah? So number one, to pay attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is he pleased or not? This is number two, sincerity. Number three, al-ilm. Brother Jazal Khair talked about al-ilm, knowledge. That you talk, you invite others based on knowledge, based on dalil, proof. Allah said, Prophet Muhammad said, or you can refer to will trust trustworthy scholars. You trust those scholars that they are really they are deeply rooted in knowledge and in their uh, creed of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and their iman. Okay, you can you say, scholar Sheikh. Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, X or Y, said so. So you are conveying what you have learned. 
so knowledge. And some scholars speak broader, broader, more comprehensively about knowledge. It includes also knowledge about your customers. Who are your customers? <coughs> Remember these five questions. Who? And then you have what? What to share with them? Who? You are talking about who are you talking with? Whom are you addressing? Then we have what? What is the content, the material that's, that is suitable for these uh, people or for those people? X or Y. If you talk with a Christian person, is it the same approach like talking or inviting a Hindu no. uh, guy? So you have to be knowledgeable of the backgrounds of people. So we're talking about who, what, how, how to convey the message, what is the best possible way through, can be through uh, an SMS, through an email, maybe some of them speak about privacy. They don't want to show or let others know that they are seeking another religion. They, this is part of their privacy. Particularly in the West, they don't like preaching. Here we go. This is a book. Read it. They don't like it. They are just like uh, preaching. I, ha I have the freedom to read, choose whatever I like. So you have to be careful on how to approach uh, others. How? How? The means. Some of them don't want to show you that he is seeking the truth. Send him an email. Send him a link. Or give him a book. Let him at his own, you know, in his free time, read it. <coughs> this is another, now, this is uh, number three. How? Number four, where? Where? Is this place suitable? Or shall I go with him to a restaurant, making ikram? Or I take him to my home? He can have some kabsa. <laughs> Some sambusa, some hummus, chapati, you know me. Huh? You, you decide. So you might think it's, it's great, it's more you know, welcoming, it's more inviting to take him home and talk with him after ikram, after building bridges with him. I will talk about this later, inshallah. Number five, when, matter, time. Is this the good timing? Is this a good, a good time? Maybe he's busy. So please, please, just two minutes, please. And now instead of two minutes, becomes 30 minutes. Maybe he's, he's on the run. He, he would like to go. He, he has another appointment. Or he, he has a commitment. Please, please, just two minutes. And some of us might take two hours. <laughs> talking, talking, talking. <laughs> Pillars of Islam, articles of faith, and this is haram, this is halal. Wow, big lecture. Just instead of two minutes, it becomes two hours. So we have to be careful. So these, quick, these are quickly major qualities of a good da'iyah. 